I do see investment model results in that we go through cycles. There are investments that at a particular cycle they do well, we reverse impairment. At a particular cycle they may struggle and we have to impair. And we always say as long as it's not at a point where we have to write it off and we have an opportunity to work on that particular investment. For us, uh, it is still hope that uh, we will turn it around and jobs will continue to be maintained. Now, if you look at the impairment uh, increase of uh, the, 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 the over four billion number that I mentioned, uh, it links uh, quite directly to the losses that I highlighted in the, in the major subsidiaries because the biggest contributor in that impairment number is FOSCO. Um, and we have shown in the consolidation the, the, the losses that we've brought in, but we've also um, at, at the investee company level uh, brought in the impairment number. If you look at impairments, four score is 1.8 billion. If you look at write-offs, score is 1.5 billion. So if you take out those two, the numbers are different. Uh, the CRO said we do have bulk keywords, but now with score, the transaction is substantially completed. So as we had impaired, we have to write off because now it's clear we're going to turn it around. And now with four scores, as I said, we're looking at all options and uh, uh, to ensure that we turn around to this. So we're looking at all options, the same way as we've looked with, with score. We have looked at the book and split it up into what we call significant investment and subsidiaries, where there is a unit that now has been set up to focus on all these significant investments and, play, and pay much closer attention in just making sure that uh, we are monitoring these investments, we are giving the required support. And uh, the, there is already a team that's on the ground that is looking at these significant investments and the, the unit is up and in operation. So it will assist us in getting the, the much required focus while we also don't forget uh, the many but also critical uh, investments in terms of our post-investment uh, monitoring. Our business model, which uh, for, for the others, I'm sure Terence knows it. So we go out into the market, we borrow. We get dividends from some of the investments that we have. We get interest from those uh, uh, loans that we've on land and we get repayments. <clears throat> in addition to that, some of those investments where the value is appreciated, we dispose of them. Without the exits, probably the, 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 the picture would be different. And again, we've gone through with the board to analyze the, the IDC funding model in that we will go through cycles where we'll go and invest in a startup and be happy to be patient over a 10 year period. And that investment will grow and at some point we will be comfortable that it is mature enough for us to exit and recycle that money in another investment. So if you look at the numbers that I presented, there's a line there before you look at even the capital gains that is called other income. And it is significantly uh, an increase from at 329 we reported, it's on page 45, 329 we reported last year to 1.6 billion in the new year. That is a positive because 10 years back we, 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 we uh, invested in Exaro, a structure that lived for 10 years and when it was unwound in November last year we were able to record significant capital gains. But further in this financial year we reinvested in the new structure that was being set up. As a result we were given free shares as, uh, for participating in the new structure and we've recorded those as day one gains. So, so again, it shows you the whole story behind the cycle of investment in, this, in, this, in the IDC. And lastly, to comment on the capital gains, uh, when we do our, our plans, we look at a five-year picture and we have a clear indication up front that for us to be able to disperse, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, we're gonna use our own uh, inflows, but also we may have to exit and um, we, may, we may borrow. So, so the capital gains are largely part of the plans that would have been put in place as we looked at the corporate plan. And they would have been in investments that the board was comfortable that they are matured, they don't form, form part of our strategy in terms of the value chains, and therefore we are comfortable to rather exit those and reinvest the money in new investments. In terms of the 
100 billion, as I said, we said we, we play in a, a number of roles. We call it the administrator, the administrator role, doing all of that. But uh, as well, we, we, we work with the envoys to ensure that we assist them in terms of the information uh, that is needed uh, for them to prepare as they go on their roadshows, but also in, in the development of, these, uh, of, of this pipeline. You are right, there are policy implications on some of these, and that uh, will have a bearing on, uh, on, uh, on, on the ability for us to develop that sustainable pipeline. And, and that's something which even the envoys have actually raised. So the good thing is, is, is that also from government, there's a, there's, a, a, there's a ministerial committee that has been formed to deal with exactly that, to say, as we go out there, we want to raise this. What is it that internally uh, that we should look at in terms of those policies? Every opportunity that we get as a board to interact with our colleagues in government, this issue is raised because the risks are tangible in the market. We are, however, also aware that on issues that are as deep and consequential, such as the land uh, engagements that we, uh, the country is having at the moment, or such as the mining charter, we understand that government needs to balance prudence with speed. We, as a country, need to get to the most, to the best and most optimal solution possible in the interest of the transformation, sustainable transformation of this country. And I, we will acknowledge, we look as a board, I actually indicated in my introductory remarks that um, where opportunities arise, we will be revising the targets that we have set for the management team because we recognize the needs of the country we recognize the expectations of the country, of us. However, we are a self-financing institution. Our balance sheet at 137 billion rands worth of assets is a mere $10 billion. And our mandate is not just in South Africa, it's in the rest of the continent. However, we keep telling management do more, do the best that you possibly can, and remain prudent.